Hello everyone, I'm the Jira Guy Productions and welcome. This is going to be a follow-up video to my previous video about the deterioration of the Titanic wreck. Now there was quite a few things in that original video I couldn't talk about due to various reasons, so I'm going to cover those in this video. This video is also largely unscripted. If you haven't already taken the time to watch that previous video, then I would recommend you watch it first before you watch this video. There will be a link in the description below. For the most part, the wreck of the Titanic is actually holding up really well, minus the aft end of the ship around the grand staircase, which has seen major deterioration over the last three decades. Now, during the research for uh, the previous video, I combed through several hours worth of documentary footage covering the Titanic wreck. As a result, I had gathered a ton of screenshots from those documentaries to use in that video. Now, I couldn't show all of those screenshots due to time and flow constraints, but today I'll show you some of the screenshots I had gathered in regards to the Grand Staircase. Now this is a screenshot from 2001, from the documentary Go to the Abyss. It takes place on the starboard side of the boat deck. Now if you look in the picture, you can see the curved out section of wall at the far end. Now that is the Grand Staircase lobby. Now if we take a look at this 2010 screenshot that takes place at the exact same angle but just further down the boat deck, we can see that just about that entire portion of the Grand Staircase lobby has disappeared within a nine year period. Now, if we look further at this photo, we can see that the bottom half of the wall appears to be still left, but that actually is not the case. That's actually an electric winch that is blocking the view. The large gap in the boat deck at the bottom of the screen is actually the expansion joint. Now this 2001 screenshot takes place looking down at that exact same corner and as you can see it's in a really bad condition. Now if you look on the left hand side of the screen you can see there are large holes in the boat deck. Those are actually the early stages of the aft end boat deck collapse, which I had talked in greater detail in my full video. Now, if we look at this 2010 screenshot, which is taken from raw dive footage, which has been published by the Telegram, we can see that yet again, within a nine year period, that entire corner of the Grand Staircase lobby has entirely disappeared, with only these spiked looking chunks still left at its base. Interestingly enough, that curved piping you can see in the corner there, that is actually the eumenic tubing that is used to transfer messages in between the McConley Wireless Room and the purser's office. Now, if you look at the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, you can see this takes place after that collapse had taken place, and what was previously a level surface is now a drop-off, and you can also see that the remaining section of the Grand Staircase lobby that is further down has also curved downwards with it. Now for this one, I'm going to have to rely on a screenshot from the video game Titanic VR because there's no better real world images as I know of that I could rely upon to demonstrate this point. So what are we looking at here is the starboard side entranceway to the Grand Staircase with the gymnasium to the left of it. Now just for some context, the video game Titanic VR is a rough reproduction of how the wreck was in 1985. 
And interesting enough, that game was the main inspiration for me to do research into the Titanic wreck that led me to creating the video about the deterioration. Now, 40 years later, in 2010, yet again, the screenshot is from the Telegraph, you can see that the entire section of the Grand Staircase lobby is just leaning forward and you can recognize the doorway there and it's just littered with the large holes. Those large holes in the boat deck there, I believe they actually open up onto B deck, not A deck, because this is after the point of collapse. And interesting enough, that twisted heap of metal on the bottom left corner is actually the aft number 8 debit. I'm not sure exactly what date this photo takes place, but I believe it's around the mid-2000s. Now this is a photo of the gymnasium, and as you can see by even at least 2005, it's in a very bad looking condition. Now this is a 2010 screenshot that takes place from off the edge of the boat deck looking towards the gymnasium. Now, as far as I can tell, the actual walls for the gymnasium appear to be largely unchanged, but the boat deck around it has suffered from a major collapse, and as a result, it's now sinking downwards very heavily towards one end. Now, this screenshot is taken from raw ROG footage from 2001, which you can find on YouTube. Now, this screenshot is located inside of the Grand Staircase lobby, looking back towards the gymnasium. Now, if we were in the same location in 1985, this area would have been covered over by the remains of the Grand Staircase ceiling, which had collapsed inwards during the fall to the sea floor. But by this time, that ceiling had largely deteriorated, but remains of it can be seen piled up against the outer walls for the grand staircase. Now, the interior of the wreck was something I originally wanted to talk about in the full video, but I decided to cut it out because simply there wasn't enough information to draw a proper conclusion in regards to anything in the interior. Now, the first explorations of the interior didn't take place until 1994, and the last ones took place in 2005. Now, obviously that doesn't suit very well with the 1987 to 2010 timeline comparison that I was going for in the full video. Now, those early expeditions in the 1990s only really were able to explore the Grand Staircase and onto parts of the First Class Reception Lounge. It was only really advances in technology during the 2000s that allowed for Robs to explore deeper and deeper into the wreck. Now, some parts of the wreck weren't even rediscovered until the 2000s such as the Turkish baths, which were only rediscovered as late as 2005, even though it is quite accessible from the bottom of the Grand Staircase on F deck. Even by the 1990s, most of the organic material inside of the interior, which had furnished much of the spaces, had long since deteriorated, and only really the strongest of woods and, surprisingly enough, leather was still left by the 1990s. Most of the interior has been reduced to wide open spaces, with the lighter wood panelling that formerly divided the spaces having long since deteriorated. For example, if we look at this image from 2001, that cabinet there 
that used to be up against a wooden wall, but that wooden wall has long since deteriorated, and if you can look behind it, you can also see the walls that formerly made up the room behind it is also disappeared as well. However, it seems to vary slightly from space to space. For example, if we look at this 2001 image looking down one of the first class passageways, as you can see, the walls appear to be largely intact, though heavily overgrown. Now, the remaining pieces of furniture are the only indication about where a room once was, but however, the furniture are also gradually decaying and crumbling away. What you can see in front of you in this image is a picture of a leather bowling hat sitting on top of some piece of furniture that is badly decayed. Now, due to the tanning process that they used back in the 1900s, it had the side effect of making leather resistant from the microbacteria that had otherwise eaten everything else in the interior of the wreck. So making leather objects, or certainly this hat, one of the few remaining identifiable personal effects you can find in the interior of the wreck. Certainly at some stage it is on my bucket list to make a video going further in depth about leather artifacts from the Titanic wreck. Now this 2001 screenshot is of the Makoni Wireless Room, which is located on the boat deck between the officer's quarters and the elevator gear. Even by 2001, the Makoni Wireless Room has, is almost unrecognizable with the amount of deterioration. Anything wooden has largely gone, but the room wouldn't be recognizable if it wasn't for the wireless equipment which as far as I'm aware is still in relatively good condition. Now some interesting news that has come up within recent times as I was producing that original video is news that the corporation, RMS Titanic Incorporated, the company that owns the sole salvage rights to the Titanic, is currently seeking legal permission to recover the Makoni wireless sets. Now, when it comes to recovering artifacts from the Titanic wreck, so far RMS Titanic Incorporated have stayed well clear of the ship itself, only ever recovering artifacts from the debris field. This news also comes at relatively the same time, where governments on both sides of the Atlantic are going to sign in a deal, or more precisely a law, to preserve the Titanic wreck for future generations. Now, the news from RMS Titanic Incorporated has reignited the debate surrounding the ethics of recovering artifacts from the Titanic wreck. My own opinion on the matter is that items should be recovered for the sake of preserving history. However, the items that have been recovered should remain in public display, and when they are displayed, they should be displayed in a respectful manner that is respectful to the 1500 people that had died during the tragedy. Now my main concern from this is that recovering the wireless sets will cause irreversible damage to the wreck, and also it would kind of set a step mark for RMS Titanic Incorporated to try and recover other items from the wreck, thus causing more permanent damage. Perhaps afterwards they might make a argument that the safe in the purse's office should be recovered, for example. Now, if you were to go and do some research into this topic yourself, you will generally find that there is very little information out there on the web in regards to this topic. Now, one of the reasons why is because there is generally very little imagery that is publicly available on which we can draw a proper conclusion from. And even when we do have imagery, sometimes those imageries are contradictory to each other. Now, one example of this 
is the port side of the Grand Staircase Lobby. Now, if we look at the 2010 mosaic of the wreck, it appears that the port side of the Grand Staircase Lobby has completely disappeared. However, if we look at the port side mosaic, you can see that the Grand Staircase Lobby is still very much there and visible, though looking a bit decrepit. Now, as far as I'm aware, there are no publicly available video or images of the Grand Staircase Lobby from 2010. However, judging on its condition in both 2001 and 5, the support side of the Grand Staircase Lobby is in remarkable condition in comparison to its counterpart on the starboard side, and certainly that rate of deterioration where it's practically gone within a nine year period doesn't really make that much sense regarding its condition in these images. Now the reason why I'm talking so in depth about the Grand Staircase, and not just being one of the most famous spaces on the ship, but it's also one of my personal favourite, probably a close second only to the first class reception lounge. Even though by 2010 standards, the Grand Staircase is a mere shadow to what it once looked like a hundred years ago, it is easy to forget that we actually are quite fortunate to have the Grand Staircase, considering that other nearby and arguably more um, architecturally impressive spaces, such as the First Class Dining Saloon and the First Class Lounge, was completely destroyed during the sinking. Though I could easily spend another half an hour going into all the little nitty details I have discovered during the research for that video, but I think I'll bring the video to an end here. As a creator, I aim to make my videos short, but yet as informative as possible. Like most people, I've had a passion for the Titanic ever since I was a little boy, when I first watched the James Cameron movie when I was like, like seven or eight years old. And it's a real pleasure to share that passion with other people from around the world who have similar interests and are deeply fascinated, just as I am, about this topic. So I would like to thank you all for watching my videos. And if you haven't already, I recommend that you subscribe for I have more Titanic content that is currently in production. If you are currently in a state of self-isolation like I am, I would like to wish you all of the best during these difficult times.